Hi there, this is Mark Coles, Head of Technical Regulations at the IET. As of today, the 8th of May 2024, a draft for public consultation of Amendment 3 to BS 76712018 has gone live. Now then, this third amendment, there's a window of four weeks, 28 days to comment on this amendment, and it will close on the 5th of June 2024. This is a shorter period than we've seen previously. In previous amendments, we've seen 12 weeks, but because this is a particular issue that we need to go out to industry, it's a four week period. When I say we, I mean it's JPL 64. JPL 64 is the committee responsible for BS 7671, and it's been decided that this amendment should be put out there. So it's gone for public consultation. And the concept here is that it will be publishing in summer of 2024. But before we get into what the amendment has within it, let's have a look at why this has come about. Now, it's all to do with bi-directional protective devices. And this was alerted to industry from BEMA. BEMA is the British Electrotechnical and Allied Manufacturers Association. And BEMA is a trade body for manufacturers of switchgear and, and of electrical accessories. And BEMA put out uh, a bulletin, which was last, oh, when was it? It was autumn. And it was updated again in March 2024. But what they were highlighting was where you've got power flow in two directionals, in two directions, sorry, which is bi-directional, the protective device in that circuit needs to be suitable for bi-directional power flow. Now, we might be familiar with the sine wave where you've got currents flowing in two directions. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the bulk of power flowing in one direction. And I'll give an example. Imagine you've charged your electric vehicle up from home and you've driven it off somewhere and you've had it recharged somewhere else, and brought it home, but you could plug it into your house and charge the batteries internally. So in that case, you've got power flowing to the vehicle when you charge it and off it goes, you charge it elsewhere. And when you bring it home, you plug it into the house and power flows into the building. So you've got power flowing in two directions. And that's the problem. The problem is that the, the protective device in that circuit needs to be suitable for power flowing in two directions, bi-directional. If it's just suitable for flowing in one direction, it's unidirectional. How do you tell what the difference is? Well, the unidirectional devices are marked at their terminals. And you'll see it's got supply and load. If the device isn't marked at its terminals, then it would be bidirectional. But if there's any confusion there with the device that you've got, always go back to the manufacturer. So that's the issue that, 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 that's looking to be covered. Let's now look at what the, uh, the what's gone into the amendment or the proposed amendment, as in the DPC. On the screen now, you should see Regulation 533201. And if you look at the second sentence within that regulation, it says, where bidirectional power flow is possible, only a suitable device for bidirectional power flow shall be used. And that's, that's exactly it. Where you've got a, um, a, an item of switch gear or a protective device in a circuit and bidirectional power is flowing in two directions, you need to use the right device. Also, you see there in the note at the end, that where the device is not marked, it can be assumed it's bi-directional. So that's the one regulation that's gone in to the, to, to the DPC. The next thing that's gone in are two definitions within part two. One is a definition of bi-directional protective device and the other is unidirectional protective device. And that just clears up what these two different devices are. So that's it. That's it. It's very, very, very straightforward. It's a very small am amendment that's proposed here. So now let's look at what we expect to see in the future. Well, in the future, hopefully it's published. We expect it to publish in the summer of 2024. And it'll be a free download from the IT's website and also from the BSI website. But slightly different to what happened at the last amendment to BS7671, when this amendment came along, which was the Brown Book in 2022, what was stated in there was that the previous version of BS7671 was withdrawn. In this situation, the Brown Book will remain, but it'll be supplemented by this third, this third amendment, and together they will form the up-to-date version of BS7671. And the instruction is that this amendment is to be used immediately. So from when it's published, from the summer of 2024, the two publications together will form the up-to-date version. And that's it. That's all I wanted to get over, over to you. So thanks for listening and we'll see you out there.